Hello everybody, this is Mr. Storm. In this video, we're going to create what we call in the game industry, in the software industry, we're gonna create something called a user interface. This is gonna allow our users to get information from the game uh, and also uh, input some commands and do some things to the game to make it change. Now, technically, we already have a user interface our ghost can move through the game and we can hit the space bar to create new blobs of light and all of that. So we already technically have a user interface in our game. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to add some more features to that user interface using the, the Unity user interface uh, functions. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a new scene because the the first thing we're going to really do is we're going to create a main menu for our game, basically a menu that's going to load as soon as our game starts up. Um, so to do this, we need to create a new scene. So scenes in Unity, um, you can have multiple scenes in a project and um, you can use one scene to go to the next scene. Basically think of it like levels, right? So I'm going to create a new scene. So create and scene. I'm going to call it main menu. Now this main menu scene, when I open it, you'll see that there's nothing inside. It's completely empty, which is exactly what I want. What I want to do is I want to start adding some objects to it. Specifically, I want to add some UI objects or user interface objects, and I want to add a canvas to start with. Now the canvas is where all of our UI objects are going to go. And if I double click on it, you'll see that it's very, very large, right? That's on purpose. Don't try to resize this down so it's the same size as our main camera because that's not gonna work for us. We want it to be nice and big, okay? It's just the nature of Unity UI systems. Now, I'm gonna make a background color on this. So to do that, we're gonna right click on the canvas object and go UI and image. And I'll call this background. All right, and I'm going to resize this background object so it's as big as the canvas itself. And then I'm going to change the color to a nice dark black. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add some text. So let me go ahead and go to UI and text. All right, and I'm going to make my text box just a bit bigger so that it kind of covers more of the scene. And I'm going to change the color of my text so I can see it. Notice it's really nice and tiny. So I want to make it nice and big. I'm going to call it Spooky Maze. This is going to be the name of my game, the title of my game. And I'm going to increase the font size here until it's nice and big. Now, I don't know about you, but that font looks kind of gross. I don't like it. So I want to change the font. Luckily, I have a... Let's go to my desktop here. Sorry, I'm, don't move things. All right, I'm gonna go to my desktop. I have a font on my desktop that I really like called Best of Treat. I actually downloaded it for this project. Um, but I need to create a new folder for um, fonts. Yep, and then I'm gonna drop that into my fonts folder. Now, to find new fonts, all you have to do is go online and maybe Google, you know, spooky font or whatever. And then whenever you, whichever one you find, you can download it. Make sure you extract it out of its um, zip folder because they always come in a compressed folder. And then you can find the font file. Now, for this font file, I'm going to use it on this spooky maze. So notice how my, my font now looks a whole lot better. It's more appropriate for my game. And I'm going to increase the text size, let's center my, uh, okay, cool. So that looks nice. It's, it's really nice and big. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is add a button. So I'm going to go to UI button and I'm going to drag my button down this way and make it nice and big. I'll use this same font style for fonts, uh, the same font for my text on my button. Notice that my button has a little arrow next to it. That's because there's a text object inside the button itself, and it's whatever the text is going to be on my button. So I'm going to drag that file, that font over here to change the font of my button. 
I'm gonna change this to play. And I will increase it so that it's nice and big inside the button. Okay, perfect. So now I have, I don't, I kinda don't like the way that's sitting, so let me move my button text up just a little bit. Okay, that looks better to me. All right, so now I have a play button. The other thing I wanna do is let's add some ghosts here to kinda of give it some more visual stuff, visual identity. So I'm gonna right click on my canvas and add another uh, UI image. And instead of it being this blank white background, I wanna use my sprite for my ghost as my image, perfect. And then I'm gonna duplicate this as well. So let's duplicate it and then put another ghost over on this side just to give it some balance. Okay, that's a pretty good looking user interface. I mean, I if I spent more time playing around with it, I probably can make it look nicer. But for my money, I think that looks probably the best. Um, okay, so now I need to get this button working. To do that, I'm gonna need to write a new script. So I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm going to call this button controller. And this is really just going to handle when I click this button. That's all it's going to do. It's going to be a very, very short script. So it's not going to really do super a lot. Um, and it's not going to take us a long time to write either. And I'm going to attach this button controller to, I mean, really anything works. I'm just going to put it on my main camera. So that that's fine. Um, and then let's open it up. And it's opening on this on this screen. Okay, perfect. All right, so we are gonna use the script to go from this scene to the next. So we need to bring in our using unity engine dot scene management. So that needs to be there. I actually don't need start or update. Okay, so the only thing I need is a method called play. And I'll call it play button. How about that? Play button. And this play button method, it's gonna do one thing. It is going to scene uh, manager dot load scene. And it's gonna load level one because that's the name of my scene. That's literally all it does. It just loads the scene whenever this method is called. So I'm gonna attach that to Unity and hit stop. Now I need to tell this button that, or this button that it needs to load that method or it needs to run that method whenever the button's pressed. So if I click on the button here, I can scroll down to this on click thing. So basically whenever I click on it, what do I want it to do? So I'm gonna add a new thing to the list. It's gonna look for an object that has that script attached to it. So for us, it's gonna be the main camera. I'm gonna drop that in there. And then under function, we're gonna to go to the button controller script. And where? Where's the method? Hmm. Interesting. I don't know why that's not there. All right. Well, here's another thing we can try. Let's create a new empty game object and call it button controller. We'll remove that script from the camera and we'll drop that script onto the button controller. All right. Now, if we go to the button, we can go to our main menu or go to our on click method, go down here, button controller. <clears throat> and I'm not seeing that method. Hmm. Interesting. Do I need to make it a public method? I love troubleshooting while I'm making videos. <laughs> and, and that's not sarcasm. I actually really do um, because it, uh, 
it shows you that even if you've been doing this as long as, hey, there it is, even if you've been doing this as long as I have, you make mistakes, you forget stuff. All right, so now I've found the play button method attached to my script, um, my button controller object. That's actually a cleaner way to do it anyway, um, because you know you don't really want unnecessary scripts attached to objects that are doing stuff. So my button controller object with the script attached to it, and now we have one more thing to check before we can actually play this and, and make sure it works. So scenes in Unity work based off of a, um, there's an order that scenes have to load in, right? And all of the scenes that you wanna be in your game have to be inside of what's called the build settings menu. So if I go to build settings, I can see that level one is a scene that's in my game, but the main menu scene isn't. So I'm gonna click add open scenes and I actually want that to go before my, my level one scene. So that way, whenever I play my game, after I've built it and published it and whatever, it opens up my main menu first. This is the order that it's gonna open my scenes. Okay, now that's done. I should be able to play this and when I click the button, it should take me to level one. So there's my spooky maze. I'm gonna click the button and it opens up level one. So now we have a, a way to like go to the, the level instead of just starting it right away. Okay, perfect. Now there are other things we can add to this obviously. We could create a how-to scene that just basically teaches you how to play the game. We can create an entire level select scene or, so that you can have you know, buttons for each level and you can click the button for the level and it'll take you right to it. There are all kinds of things we can do with this, right? Um, but for us, for right now, that's probably the best way to go is just have a big button that says play and when you click it, it takes you into the game. Okay, so that's not the only thing we can do with user interfaces, right? We could also create a um, an overlay that gives us information about the game itself. Um, to do that, let's first of all, let's save and save our project. Let's go into the uh, level one scene and let's think about, ooh, might have to zoom in. Let's double click on the level here so we can zoom in. Let's think about what we might want to have show up in our game, in our scene, right? So we have these uh, refills that will in increase the amount of blobs that we have in our inventory, we'll say, uh, our ammunition. But we have no way to know how much ammunition we have left because there's nothing telling us that that's a thing. So what we can do is we can actually create a user interface that will very simply tell us how many blobs we have. So let's right click, go to UI, go to, um, let's create some text, UI text. Now notice that I didn't have a canvas here and it created a canvas and then put the text inside of it. So that's something you can do. Um, and I'm gonna just double click on it and back it up. So now my level is down here, it's nice and tiny. My uh, user interface is right here, it's nice and big. And my text is right down here in the bottom left-hand corner. I'm gonna change the text to be white text. And then if we click on the game view, notice that I can now actually see my text down here in the bottom corner, right? So my, my text is actually working, even though it doesn't look like it's in the right spot in my scene view, okay? So that's something you're gonna have to just get used to with user interface. All right, so for this text, I'm actually gonna just set it to, I'll just say the number two. I wanna use that same font because I want design consistency. Um, and I'm gonna increase the size by a whole lot, like make it really nice and big. Okay. And let's see what that looks like in the game view. Uh, it's pretty nice, pretty decent. Although I'm gonna change my background camera color. Um, hello, projection, rendering. Where's my color options? Environment, there we go. I'm gonna change it to be a little darker. There we go. I want it to kind of match the, the background. All right, 
So this text uh, object is going to tell me how many blobs that I have. Um, and, and really, it's not doing anything right now. But I can control this via a, via a script, basically. So let's open up our player controller script, which already has in there stuff about my blob count, right? So I have blob count right there. Now in the update method at the bottom, every frame I just want to update my blob count, right? So what I can do is let's grab a reference to the um, to the text object here. So I'm going to create a new public text. No, nope. and I'm going to call it. Uh, count and I think text isn't the right keyword hold on one second um, I had sorry <laughs> I had my notes up here and then I just lost them so let me open up an older script so that I can make sure I'm using the right keywords here Ah, I remember what I what I did wrong. So the reason why I'm getting an error there is because I need to bring in a new package using unity engine.ui. So basically the user interface um, uh, options need to be brought in just like scene management. Okay, so now I've done that. So I'm gonna make a public text, I'm gonna call it count. All right. And then let's create a new method. Um, actually, no. No, I don't need a whole method for this. Basically, all I need to do is in my update method, I can say count.text. So basically the text inside my, my text object, right? So my text object, the actual text of it, is going to be equal to, um, and we'll say uh, blob count. I mean, that's pretty easy, right? And I actually need to dot to string. So basically, I need to turn my blob count into a string of text that can be displayed on my page. Okay, and it's in my update method, so it's gonna update every frame. That really should be all we need for this to work properly. So uh, I'm gonna attach my script to Unity and then stop. I had to do that on the other screen, but that's fine. So it's updating. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to grab our ghost and we'll see that we have this count text object here. All we need to do is drag this text into there so that it knows which text to update. And now when we play our game, we should see this number change in the corner whenever we drop a blob. So now it's down to one, now it's at zero. If I pick up a blob, I have one more left, it goes back to zero. Pick up a blob, it goes to one, goes back to zero. All right, so now with one really quick line of code, let me bring this back over here. Where we go, right here. So with this, we've really just been able to give our user some really clear information about what's going on in their game. Um, and I, I, I hope that this shows you that Almost everything in Unity can be programmed. Like even the text that shows up on this user interface can be programmed. We can make it say anything we want using a script. All of this stuff can be programmed. And, and all we need to do is just know the right um, uh, commands that we need to type in order to make it happen. Okay. So at this point, my game is, uh, it's I have a main menu, um, which I'm going to actually open up that scene again and yes we'll save so I have a main menu now in my game and I have a 
account for my ammunition. So I can play my game, and now I can see that I have a certain amount of blobs in my game, and I can use them, and that changes the number that's on the screen. Perfect. Okay. So, at this point, we have almost an entirely completely ready-to-go game. The only thing that we're missing is sound effects and music. So next week, we're going to talk about that, um, and then we'll be, uh, we'll be done with this game, and we can make something else, something new. All right, thanks for sticking around. I'll see you next time.